Hello there, welcome to my channel and finally I watched Captain Marvel 2 or The Marvels or whatever you wanna call it. All that matters is, this is Captain Marvel's sequel and it doesn't have anything to do with any other part of the MCU. Now you might think that's a good thing cause individual stories are good but the problem is, the individual story has to be very good in order to captivate. Like Iron Man 3 didn't work cause it got entangled so much into the MCU while Thor 2 failed because it was very individual story story for Thor. So Captain Marvel 2 had to take a balance and all they decided to do is, is just another solo story of Captain Marvel and the planet of the planet of the Kree's I think Hala or something. And to sum up the story of the movie, the planet of Captain Marvel or the planet Captain Marvel was in the first movie is on the brink of extinction cause they have less resources and hence proving that Thanos was right once again. So the villain is like, she gotta use her power to suck off water, air and various resources from different planets. And how can she do it? With the help of a bangle, which is like Ms. Marvel's bangle and somehow Ms. Marvel was never tied up with Kree's. So how she got that Kree bangle? Well, the clandestine has that Kree bangle is like another thing they could potentially show cause this movie feels like the setup is missing and this is a payoff. Like literally this feels like I'm missing a movie and the bangle has the power of creating jump points in space. So yeah, something happens, the power of Captain Marvel, Photon and Ms. Marvel ties together so whenever they use their power, they swap their places. And that's a concept which is pretty amazing cause they could have done so many things so many times much more creative than what this movie had. Cause there are certain scenes in this movie which yeah believe me I watched this movie two times and there are some inconsistency where some character uses their power but they don't switch places. But they do switch places when the plot needs them to do. And Nick Fury holy shit he was like a babysitter for Kamala's parents. Like yeah Nick Fury the creator of the shield. The Founder of Avengers is now babysitting. And know what? After Secret Invasion, if Nick Fury was shitting in a public toilet, that would be much more interesting than seeing whatever that shit was in Secret Wars. So far from the video, you might think that I hated the movie, which is not. I really enjoyed certain parts of the movie, while certain other parts of the movie were so wacky, they are outright cringy. Like, literally, there is a planet where people talk while singing, and they cannot talk without singing. Like, yeah, that's. That's a gag used in the movie, which was like dumb but cringe. All I'm saying is, it's an average movie with a little bit of good things sprinkled on top and a lot of bad things dumped onto it. Cause a villain, like literally she's like Ronan the Accuser but they don't have Ronan, I think he died in Guardians 1 so what can they do? They made another villain, like at this point reviving Ronan would have made much more sense than whatever this crappy villain was. This movie, if I have to read it, I'd give it a 4 out of 10 because this is so much potential wasted. And a little bit of spoiler because I'm gonna talk about the post credit scene. There are two post credit scenes. The first one is about Kamala Khan going around recruiting the members of Young Avengers. And she tells the dialogue exactly point by point to what Nick Fury said to Iron Man and that was a nice touch. But the thing is, at this point I don't care. Cause the Young Avengers would have Kid Bishop whom I really liked, Ms. Marvel I kinda liked and Cassie Langs and I didn't enjoy her portrayal in Ant-Man 3. And the second post credit scene was about Monica Rambeau going through the reality and she lands up on the X-Men universe where we get to meet Beast and her mother as another superhero. I don't know that much of Marvel comics to know which hero she is portraying but she is some other superhero, she is not Captain Marvel. So the post credit scenes are also not like super awesome or something. And that's all I got for today's video, hope you enjoyed my video and if you did, hit the like button, share button, subscribe button and all sort of buttons down there. Cause I wanna get famous and I wanna interview the Marvel actors and actresses. Cause I really wanna know how they went from Endgame to Captain Marvel to 